on everyone, join the crowd. Jesus is alive, we'll make it loud. So throw your hands up and bounce and bounce. Are you ready? Up, you guys I am so excited because I am camping right now now I'm kind of a professional camper see I have this really cool hat on my shirt has a tree on it and I have this lantern which is what professional campers use when it gets dark and I just found the perfect place to set up our tent now I think it's gonna be pretty easy the instructions say Lay the tarp down, put the poles through, and then put the other part on top. Easy. I could do that with my eyes closed. I'll see you guys in a little bit once the tent is up. Today, our story takes place on top of a mountain. Jesus noticed the large crowd that had gathered. So he walked to the top of a mountain. He sat down and began to teach. He taught about anger and loving our enemies and giving to people who need help. He talked about prayer and worrying and judging other people. Jesus was teaching them all about how God wanted them to live. And as he often did, Jesus did that by telling a parable, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. This parable was about two men who were very different. One of the men was wise because he listened to Jesus' teaching and chose to live the way God wants us to live. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. So the first man in our story built his house on top of a rock. Well, what do we know about rocks? We know they're sturdy. We know that they are firm. We know that they won't crumble or break easily. They are a good place to build a home because they give a solid foundation. Then Jesus told about a storm. It wasn't just a little rainstorm. He said the rains came down and the streams began to rise. There must have been a lot of rain. Jesus said the wind was blowing so hard and beating against the house. This was a huge storm, but it didn't hurt the man's house at all. It didn't fall. It didn't break. The house survived the storm only because it was built on the solid rock foundation. But there was another man in this story and he wasn't so wise. Jesus tells us that he was foolish. The man heard what Jesus was saying, but he chose to live his own way instead of God's way. This man decided to build his house on sand. What do we know about sand? It's soft, it isn't super sturdy. There are a lot of ways that it can crumble and fall apart. So when the rain comes down really hard and the winds beat against the walls of the house, what happens? The house doesn't stay up. It shakes and it falls with a big crash. Now, I want you to notice something really important. These two people that Jesus is talking about are really similar. They both build a house, 
They both hear Jesus' teaching. They both are hit with the same storm. The difference is what they build their house's foundation on. Jesus is telling us that He is the one who can provide us with the foundation we need in our lives. It is only through hearing what He is saying and doing what He says, following God's way, that we will be able to hold up against a storm that may come. Jesus never tells us that we aren't going to have storms come into our lives. But when we have that firm and solid foundation, we can trust that what Jesus says is true. He only wants good things for His people, and He knows what's best for us. So we know that when we're listening and following Him, He will help us through the storm each and every time. Build your life on Jesus, and He will be your solid foundation. He will be your rock. was supposed to be in here. Oh well. Hey friends, today we learned that Jesus is our solid rock foundation. We can always count and rely on him to guide us and we can trust him to lead us. I know, why don't we decorate a rock to help us remember that Jesus is our solid rock. You guys, Jesus rocks. So. We're gonna need a rock from outside, and I found this one. And then we're gonna go ahead and write either Jesus or Jesus rocks. And if writing is hard for you, friends, you can draw a picture. You can draw hearts, you can draw a cross, you can draw whatever makes you happy. The markers I'm gonna use are Crayola markers, which are washable, or you can use Sharpies. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, here we go. Hey friends, doesn't this look great? Jesus rocks. Now, if you don't have markers at home, friends, feel free to use crayons or paint even. So what I'm gonna do, friends, is I'm gonna go ahead and place this in my garden so that I will see it every day and I will remember that Jesus is my solid rock foundation. Friends, if you don't have art supplies at home, I have another great idea. You can gather some rocks and you can spell out Jesus. Look, I did it here. Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -S. And every day, friends, I will remember that Jesus is my solid rock foundation.
So draw on the left a vertical line down. And then on the opposite side, draw another vertical line. And then do a horizontal line at the bottom. This is the picture that she was supposed to be drawing or that Gage is describing. And then... Stella, hold up your picture. This is the picture that actually came out. I don't know if you can... Hmm. Okay, so now Stella come up and describe to Gage how to draw this. So, just so everyone can see, this is what we're describing. I'll set the timer for a minute. And, oh, okay. and then he can start. Remember, you can't tell him what it is. You're just telling him how to draw. All right, go. Okay, start by drawing just a line. So this is what we were drawing. Oh, that's what I thought Feel it was. Close. And this is this is what was. <laughs> so to compare. Hmm. So yeah, it's it's really tricky to draw something that someone's just describing you step by step, right? Um, but they did a really good job drawing. So now you guys try it at home. Uh, find a picture and describe it to someone. Describe it for someone to draw. And just remember that we should listen and follow Jesus. Like, even though it may not be perfect, the key is that if we listen and follow Jesus, that we'll have a strong foundation, even if it's not the prettiest picture. In today's story, we heard about a man who built his house on the sand. It was not a firm foundation. It's kind of like whenever we don't do what Jesus tells us to do. Now, we would never want to be like the man who builds his house on sand, but I thought it would be really fun to make some kinetic sand together. So what you'll need for this is you'll need four cups of sand. I have colored sand, but don't worry, you can use whatever kind of sand you have. I've already measured out the four cups of sand. Then I'm gonna need two and a half cups of flour. I've got that measured out in this bowl. Then I'm gonna mix them together. Okay, great. Now we're all mixed and it's time to add one cup of vegetable oil. You're gonna probably wanna start with something like a wooden spoon or a spatula to help you stir. But once you get it working in there, feel free to jump in there with your hands. It's a little bit messy at first, but it's a whole lot of fun. You'll keep mixing until it's all well combined. And then we've got kinetic sand. Have fun, guys. Okay. Well. Okay, let's see. About this pole. Okay. Ugh! There's got to be a better way. Ugh. I wish there was a button to make it go up. In today's story, we heard there was a big storm that came and knocked down one of the men's houses. Now, when I think of storms that can knock down houses, I think about waves. There are different types of waves. Some are small, you can barely see them. Those are called ripples. Others are called rogue waves. These are super big waves that can get to almost 100 feet tall. These are more than likely the type of waves that brought the foolish man's house down. Then there are a bunch of different types and sizes of waves in between those two. I think you could even count getting splashed by some water as an unexpected wave. So today we're going to play a game called Wave or Wave. Here's how it's going to happen. There's going to be a video of a person playing on a screen. This person is either going to wave at the camera or an unexpected splash of water is going to hit them. Right before they either wave or get splashed by the wave, the video will freeze. The goal is for you guys to guess what happens to the person. Are they going to wave or get splashed by water? Then the video will play and you can see if your guess was right. Try and see how many you can guess correctly. Let's play. Jen. <laughs> Dylan. Riley. Sydney. 
Wow, great job guessing guys. Make sure you're watching out for those waves. They really seem to come out of nowhere. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me. Safe to shore Just like they're in the story, but out of s'mores. 
and we should use the sticky marshmallows to hold the graham crackers up and use the chocolate bars for our foundation. But remember, it's okay to get your hands so sticky and messy. Cause building a house is sticky and messy work. Let's get building. Wow, these look pretty good. We had really fun building our houses. Remember, we should build our foundation on Jesus and his word and to listen to what he says. Not shifting sand or chocolate bars, but, but Jesus is a solid rock. rock. Now let's check in with Mrs. Maddie to see how her tent's coming along. <laughs> hey, you guys. Okay, so it turns out I actually had no idea what I was doing. It took me three whole hours, but then I finally decided to pick the instructions back up and follow them step by step. After I did that, it only took me 15 minutes to put the tent together. I should have done that in the first place. But you know what? We do the exact same thing with Jesus. He tells us exactly what he needs us to do and he wants us to follow him. He doesn't do this because he's mean. No, it's because he cares for us and he wants what's best for us. He gives us a solid foundation that will hold up against any storm, just like this tent will hold up through the night because I put it together correctly. We know that we can trust what God says and follow him. Jesus wants what is best for us and we know that listening to and following him is what is best for us. I'm so glad you guys could join us today. See you next time.